Today we are going to talk about something that I think is really important. We're going to talk about Instagram photos and how you can actually take better Instagram photos really, really fast and you don't need to have any kind of other lens or anything like that. We're going to talk about like composing and editing your photos to make them look really good before you post them. So to be able to do this tutorial, we need a photo. It is midday and it's probably the worst time ever on the day to shoot and I'm out here just outside my office which is probably also the most boring place that you can find on planet earth when it comes to taking photos but then again you know when you're taking photos for Instagram you don't always have like the optimal conditions around you you know sometimes you get just gotta use what you got and uh, currently <laughs> this is what I got I can see that we got some like wet tarmac going on over here which is good so I think we're gonna use that and the Sun is coming like straight from behind us if I put the camera down then we do get like a nice reflection going on here let's see what we can do okay so for this shot I'm gonna use the Tamron 2875 which is it's not a cheap lens but it's also like one of the cheapest lenses that you can buy for the Sony full frame system and it also has this like 2.8 aperture that is really good when you want to play around with foregrounds and backgrounds in your shots and for the sake of this tutorial we're gonna shoot at f5.6 just to show you that you don't need to have a lens with wide aperture as long as you know what you're doing and how you're composing your shot and how you play around with the different like leading lines and stuff that is in your photos. So the reason that I want to shoot at f5.6 is because most kit lenses have the aperture of f5.6 and most people that are taking photos buying the first camera do not actually have a lens with a 2.8 or 1.8 aperture to get that really smooth blurred out background. So a couple of key things that I think of when I'm composing my photo is one, to use the rule of thirds. Because using them when you're taking your photo is gonna make it so much easier for you when you are composing your shots. And general rule that I got is that I wanna have like my face on one of the crossing lines that is on the rule of thirds. And since we were on such a high aperture like f5.6, I knew that the background wouldn't be that blurred out. But the closer you actually put the foreground to the lens and the further away you put your subject, then that is gonna make the foreground a little bit more smoothed out. I also always make sure that the autofocus point is placed on my face or where my face is going to be because the hardest part when you're shooting selfies especially with the imaging edge app is that you need to set the focus point in camera before you actually take the photo let's set this up so usually when i take selfies like this i am using my phone as the remote for the camera. So I basically like start the Imaging Edge app and then, you know, take the photo. Gotta say, that photo actually came out way better than I thought it would. So let's, uh, let's do some editing to this photo and see what we can do before I post this banger onto Instagram, right? The first thing we're gonna do is to make sure that we have the right crop for our photo because we wanna post it like vertically as a portrait onto Instagram. So we're gonna choose a four by five crop. And then I want to make sure that my face, again, is landing on one of these intersections of the rule of thirds because even though we have a lot of foreground down here, it's still gonna look way better when you actually go and compose your shots using the rule of thirds. And this is like a really simple way to make your photos look way better than they actually were when you took them. So when I crop the photo using the rule of thirds, what I do now is basically just edit it the way that I want it to look. So I'm just gonna do that really quick and then we're gonna jump into Photoshop and remove that ugly background because who wants to have a lot of cards in the background of the shot? I don't. <laughs> The first thing that I want to do in Photoshop is duplicate the layer by hitting Command J. And that is because I don't want to do any kind of adjustments to the original layer. Because again, if something happens, then you're in bad luck, mate. To remove the cards, the first thing that we have to do is to make sure that we cut that out in a nice, tidy way. And I'm going to use the pen tool for this. And then I'm going to start all the way out here at the edge. 
And if I click and drag, you can see that these like smooth curves comes out. And if you drop this and hold Alt, then you can just change this the way you want it to go. You know, since we're just gonna do a straight line all the way up to my knee, it's not gonna be that crucial. And somewhere around here, we can go up and now we don't have to be that thorough because now we're gonna try to replace all of this with the content of our fill. So we're just gonna make a like rough outline here. And uh, well, let's keep going all the way around. Then we're gonna right click this and we're gonna choose make selection. And now I'm gonna put the feather radius to somewhere around like three. Now, what we want to do is to go up to edit and then we're gonna choose content aware fill. We are going to remove everything that is not a tree and that is not green. Okay, it doesn't look that good just yet, but we're gonna hit okay. Now, we are going to go up to the clone stamp tool and we're gonna increase the size of this to somewhere around like 300, I think. Then we're gonna hold down Alt and then we're gonna choose the source. Now, we can basically just paint out onto the mask. Now, it actually looks kinda good. And wow, that looks really good. Like, I could not say that there was actually cars there to begin with. And while we're at it, we're gonna remove the cars on the right hand side as well because, you know, it went so fast, so it's gonna be really simple for us. So we're gonna choose the pen tool once again, and I'm gonna start out here at the edge, and then we're gonna drag this out, and now we can go back up to edit, and then we're gonna choose content aware fill. Once again, we're gonna remove everything that is not a tree or is green, so. Oh, that actually looks really good. All right, all the cars in the background are gone, which is good because it looks way better now. And here is the before and after. Always try to think of the composition of your photos and try to use the foregrounds to your advantage. But don't feel locked using the rule of thirds all the time because you can just play around with it and shoot whatever fits you the most. But I think using the rule of thirds is a really good way when you are running gun shooting, trying to get a good shot really quickly and then just set up the camera, make sure that set a focus point on the rule of third, place yourself where you wanna be in the shot and then bam. And if you actually pay some attention to the editing process, you can make it look way better than it actually was. Try to think about the composition, the focus points, the foregrounds, the backgrounds, the different things that you got in your shot, and especially the exposure, because without a good exposure, the shot is not gonna be good. So I really hope that you learned something from this video and that you found this interesting. And if you did, please do drop a comment below because I would love to know what you thought about the video. If you liked it, do give it a thumbs up because it does help a lot, so thank you for that. If you haven't subscribed yet, that'd be highly appreciated. So, uh, oh, hi, um, thank you for watching, and uh, now it's time for a cup of coffee. Until next time. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be.